that time to study uh, the word of God again um, this evening and you are welcome in Jesus name uh, we are trusting God that and uh, God we also encourage us and uh, deeply in his word this evening in Jesus name let's pray and uh, Lord we thank you for bringing us together again uh, in your word as we have been looking at it uh, with uh, the mindset of seeing Jesus, of understanding Him uh, vividly, uh, or getting the clearer picture, the exact uh, picture that uh, God has painted to the world uh, as we are trusting the Spirit of God to make that picture clear to us. And Lord, again today we are praying that you will do the same for us. Move us forward in understanding. Lord, give us clarity. Give us direction. Let your name be praised. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. So you are welcome. Uh, you will remember that we have been moving forward gradually in the book of Hebrews. Uh, I will encourage individual who has been following us to go over the books personally uh, on your home because there are several things that we couldn't mention because we are constrained, uh, you know, constrained of time and then um, uh, this platform may not um, allow us to go into details as we would have loved to do so. And also, it is just um, a Bible study, a devotional Bible study, so to say, for us to be connected to Christ. Uh, we are not doing some uh, a deep uh, academic or theological exercise here. Um, we are just finding out who Jesus is uh, to us and um, the exact picture that God has painted about him to us. Um, so I encourage us to uh, do more on our own as the Lord um, we charge our hearts um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Alright, so you remember that we have identified according to the writer uh, here right from chapter 5 that uh, Jesus Christ is the is our highest or the high uh, the great high priest and the we saw how he actually revealed to his um, audience uh, the what made Jesus Christ greater uh, than Aaron? What made him the perfect great high priest? And so we have been talking about that and we saw how he quickly alluded to the rank that God has placed Jesus, the order in which God placed him and he noted that it was in the same order of Melchizedek. Then we noted that immediately he mentioned this. He wanted to move forward but he couldn't do that because he needed to address some issues in the life of the people, the lives of his uh, audience and he quickly digressed a bit and to identify uh, to address uh, some issues in their lives so uh, we have taken time to look at those areas that he addressed and we have done that uh, from the latter part of chapter 5 and 
to the middle of chapter 6 and what were those things that we have addressed there we saw there that he addressed the issue of uh, immaturity he said that look he will have wanted to say a lot of things about uh, what he has just mentioned now that is the order the rank in which God has placed Jesus uh, you know priesthood they say uh, we have a lot to say in a bet you are children you won't understand so he addressed that he identified that then at the beginning of chapter 6 he addressed uh, the need for them to be mature the need for them to move on to spiritual maturity then as a was also coming to you know to the end of chapter 5 he began to address uh you know the danger of apostasy that look if you continue to be children you continue in the state of immaturity you are likely to fall away you are likely you know to to fall away from what you have believed and he warned them that look and when somebody get to that level it will be impossible for him to be brought, brought back this was a very sharp warning uh, to these people and I think that is where uh, we stopped we saw how he warned them seriously so that none of them will remain children will remain immature you know in Christ and I think that is a very strong warning to you and I also as we have seen last time that look when somebody remain so long in disobedience he will fall away eventually he will fall into apostasy and bringing such back to repentance may be very very difficult and that's why we encourage ourselves to give it a thought and to return to Christ that we shouldn't deliberately you know remain in disobedience to the will of God and uh, come back to Christ and uh, everything will be all right that is what we uh, emphasized in our last study now quickly today we are going to see how the writer concluded chapter 6 you know still encouraging the people after he has addressed the issue of uh, the danger of apostasy and uh, still talking to them now so we will just start from verse 9 of chapter 6 today then uh, look at how he concluded chapter 6 then we will go ahead and pray and um, today so if you have your Bible there quickly I believe you have it chapter 6 Hebrews then I will begin the reading from verse 9 and uh, we will emphasize one or two things uh, that we needed to today then we will go and pray uh, briefly any moment from now all right I go ahead and read from verse 9 of chapter 6 it says even though we speak like this they are friends we are convinced of better things in your case the things that have to do with salvation God is not unjust uh, he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help him we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized we do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised 
verse 13 say when god made his promise to abraham since there was no one greater than him to swear by he swore by himself saying i will surely bless you and give you many descendants and so after waiting patiently abraham received what was promised people swear by someone greater than themselves and the hold confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument because god wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the ears of what was promised he confirmed it with an oath god did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for god to lie we who have fled to take the hold of the hope said before us may be greatly encouraged mm. we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner jesus has entered on our behalf he has become a high priest forever in the order of melchizedek hallelujah now you see just to let the people know just to reassure the people again you know the emphasis that we are dealing with or that the author was dealing with was just to show them that jesus that we are talking about is i is priesthood is forever is priesthood is not in any way in the same level with aaron you know he was trying to let them know the see the superiority of the of the priesthood of jesus christ to that of aaron that's the actual the, the intention of the writer here but he needed to know move to several areas digress into several areas of you know to make himself clear to do a lot of uh, clarity you know here and there so that there won't be any iota of doubt in the heart of his audience now see he said and uh, as we go back to where we have you know we, we stopped last time you remember that we said we stopped at verse 8 where you know he warned us he warned the people about the danger of apostasy <clears throat> then he now said that where we are not saying that you have backslided we are not saying that you are uh, you are doing this but just to warn you just to let you know that you need to grow you need to you don't need to remain just to let you see that if you remain children if you don't grow if you don't uh, you mature in understanding this is what is likely to happen to you you know see even though we speak like this though we are talking about like this you know see dear friends we are convinced we know you we are convinced of better things in your own case you know that things that pertain to salvation we are convinced and he says, see, God that we are talking about won't forget you. He will not forget your sufferings. He will not forget, you know, your endurance, you know, how you have endured till now, all the love you have shown to the people of God, you know, how you have endured despite uh, persecutions uh, in this, uh, from your uh, king's men and so on and so forth. Uh, but look, he says, see, but the reason why we are talking like this is that we want to teach you we want you each of you to show this same diligence to the very end we want you to be diligent to the very end we want you to hold on to what you have believed we don't want you to remain children we want we don't want you to remain uh you know to fall into error to fall into apostasy we don't want you to do that that's why we are warning you that's why we are talking like this and he says something he said we he said we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end you know so that what you offer may be fully realized so that what we are open for the better life future that we are open open for we will realize it 
That's why we are talking like that's why we are pushing you, we are encouraging you, you are warning you. He said, We do not want you to become lazy. You see that now that remember the spiritual laziness that he addressed. That the reason we need to address that, we need to address uh, spiritual immaturity, you know, uh, is that we do not want you to become lazy. We don't want you to fall into error, to apostasy. We don't want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. The, the reason why we are challenging you is that so that you can imitate good things. People of God, imitating good things. You see, uh, if God has challenged people who have been, you know, before us like this, to imitate the people that have actually lived before them, who have done well, who have served the Lord, and who have really, really served the Lord diligently, say, look, we are challenging you not to be lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and what and patience. Two things that is he was actually uh, requesting from those people. That what is that? In, uh, they should imitate those two things. One faith. They, they, they should imitate those people. But how did those people inherit what has been promised? He said, through our faith and patience. That you and I also, we need faith. We need patience. We need more of God's help. And he told those people that, look, don't be lazy. You need faith. You need patience. If you must realize what has been promised. If you must realize what God has promised, what you know the promise of God in Christ, if you must realize it, despite the persecutions around you, you need not to be lazy. You need to be strong through faith and patience. Then it he now began to analyze the certainty of God's promise. How certain. In order for these people to see, they say, look, we don't want you to be lazy. What we want you to do is that you must imitate the people who actualize the promise of God through faith and patience. The emphasis today, people of God, is faith and what? And patience. One of the, one of, I mean, the, the two major ingredients that we need to actualize the promise of God in our lives is what? Faith and patience. We, we need faith. We need to trust God. Not only that, we need to be patient with Him. We cannot be, we be, be faster than God in all our dealings. If we are in the will of God, we cannot be faster than Him. Anybody who is in God's will has to be patient. You have to be patient with God. As long as you and I are in the will of God, then I realize that the reason why I rush in life, the reason why we rush is because we are not sure whether we are in God's will. The reason why we rush at things we rush at, uh, you know, to achieve things. Or the reason why we become over ambitious is because we are not sure or we doubt. We don't have enough faith to be sure that we are in the will of God. That's why we run, uh, you know, after we run faster, maybe after, you know, than God, because. As long if we are sure that we are in the will of God, uh -uh, where are we rushing to? If somebody is very sure that is in the will of God, where is he rushing to? Where is he going? Is he not? Is he not God that is going to to drive his life? 
eh? somebody who is already in the in the maybe in an aircraft and is he want to be he want to be faster than the pilot where is he rushing to you don't see somebody in the in an, in, a, in an aircraft and is telling the captain that you need to speed up you need to speed up i need to get it you know you know mm -mm. he is already there he's already in the hand of the pilot what he needs to do is to relax and trust him that i can't be faster than this person he can't jump out of the uh, of the craft the aircraft and say you are too slow uh, I want to, uh, please, I want to alight now, now, now. Please stop me in the mid-air. <laughs> it's not possible. He, he, you know, he has to trust the pilot until he lands safely. Now, if we can actually understand God in this way, that look, I can be faster than him as long as we are in the will of God. Now, so the reason why we can't be patient with God as I learned is that we doubt whether we are in the will of God. Brother and sister, are you in God's will? That's the question that I think we should ask ourselves as we uh, go ahead and close this evening and pray. Is that That's the point of emphasis. Anybody who is in the will of God should be patient. If you want to actualize the promise of God. When we are in His will, we don't rush. We need to be patient. Brother and sister, whatever you may be going through this evening, no problem. Things may not be right. But the issue is that first and foremost, what you need to do is find out. Are you in the will of God? Are you in God? Are you in Christ? Are you in the purpose of God? Have you been able to discover the purpose of God for your life? Now, if you have been able to get hold of that, that, that something in your mind, you have a witness in your heart that you are in the purpose, you are in the counsel, you are in the will of God, no problem. Do not worry. What you need to do is now exercise patience because it will bring that promise to pass. Look at how certain the promise of God is. You know, for those people that are in the will of God. Now, just for you and I to be sure tonight, people of God, God has actually revealed to us the certainty of His promise, provided we can remain and stay in His purpose. Look at verse 13 as I emphasize the rest of the verses. Then we go and pray. He said, When God made His promise, now see, encouraging them to imitate. Those people that have actually, those people that have actualized the promise of God by faith and patience. Look at that now. He said, when God made his promise, made his promise to Abraham, using Abraham as a case study here, he said, since there was no one greater than him to swear by, look at, he swore by himself. You see, how certain the promise, if it is God that has promised people of God, he said, God, when he was making the promise to Abraham, God, there was nothing that God can use to swear that is greater than himself. So he used himself <clears throat> to let you know that, look, what we are talking about is certain. That Jesus Christ is certain. Jesus Christ, there is nothing to doubt about him. Nothing. If you have given your life to him and you want to follow him, brother and sister, you are on the right path. There is nothing for you to doubt. There is certainty. Is a certain. There is all certainty in him. Because we, as we are seen in the word of God, the Bible says when God wanted to make promise to Abraham, he couldn't swear with anything greater. He had to swore. He swore by himself. Saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And, and, see, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. We need to imitate people like this. God is he saying that you and I need to go and imitate people like Abraham. He waited 
patiently because God has swore with himself. People of God, the promise of God for us is certain in Christ. As long as we are in Christ, what we need is what? Patience. Let me quickly read. He said, but people swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirmed what is said and put an end to all arguments. Look at that now. See, when there is people swear, and they will also put an oath to to do what? To confirm, you know, to put all argument aside that in case you don't want to be this is an oath that there can't be any argument again. There is an oath. Look at that. The promises of God is not debatable. Let me tell you, you can't debate the word of God. Don't debate the promise of God concerning your life. Listen, because of challenges, it will come to pass. All what is required is what? Patience. Look at that, because the promise of God is with an oath. In order to silence every argument. He said, verse 70, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his promise very clear to the ears of what was promised. Look at that. God, the reason why he's doing this, God has made a note to let you know the certainty of it. He said, God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to us. He said he confirmed it with an oath. Hmm. Look at that. He confirmed it with what? An oath. God went ahead to, to make an oath in order for, for him to make plain the, the, the certainty, the unchanging nature of his purpose. I say God did so so that by two unchangeable unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to do what to lie. He said, We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Now you see we have we have we are we are holding on to the hope that is set before us. So the reason why God has done this for us so that we can be greatly what encouraged. It was actually building the mind of these people that look hold on patiently to the promise of God. Do not change. Do not remain immature. Do not fall into apostasy. Do not fall away. Do not allow challenges, you know, to make you fall away from grace. He said, we have this hope as an anchor of the soul. Hmm. Firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Hmm. Where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. Encouraging these people to see the certainty of God's promise. And he says something. He has become a high priest forever for how long please forever jesus is our high priest forever in the order of melchizedek he has become our what our high priest we cannot not over emphasize this that we have one high priest who lives forever and is the lord jesus christ what we need to do is to hold on to is to hold on to him and serve him because this high priest is forever he lives forever he doesn't die he is able to fulfill all the promises he has made the promise of god will not change and then so he say we have this hope in the anchor of the soul firm and secure and it has entered into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Hmm. You see, the inner sanctuary that nobody enter. That even if Aaron want to enter, it is once in a year. And if they are not sure that he will come out, because he may die. If that is, if he didn't, if he entered that place wrongly or whatever, 
you know but look at the bible says uh, jesus christ entered there and our foreigner he has entered there on our behalf he entered there and because of that he became our high priest forever we need to trust we have an high priest people of god we need what we need to do is to trust him to rely on him and he say what type of high priest then he say it takes him back to where he started in the order of Melchizedek. Now you see he alluded to that and he closed that discussion with it again and say in the same order of Melchizedek that I've mentioned the other time. But now I have to now continue my discussion. You know, the reason why he had to do a lot of discussion was to clear all this doubt, to clear doubt in their heart. Then he, he, he now went back, he concluded this discussion now that look the type of high priest i'm still talking about is in the order of melchizedek then he will continue to now expand on who melchizedek is as we continue our studies in the next chapter uh the next time we are going to meet that is chapter seven that for you to see here that he needed to do all this because he wanted to talk about the order the order of the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the rank in which God has placed his priesthood, and that is the order, you know, of Melchizedek. So we shall do that as the Lord will help us in our next chapter. Are you in the will of God, brother? Are you in the will of God? Find out. If you are in the will of God, then wait for the Lord. Whatever you may be trusting the Lord for, wait there. Wait there. Be patient. Because people like Abraham, because they have discovered that God will not lie. You see, they waited patiently and they inherit the promise. So, the encouragement to you and I today is that we should not become lazy. We should not become, uh, uh, you know, discouraged. But we should imitate, you know, the people that actually actualize the promise of God through faith and patience do you want us to pray together now our father and our god want to thank you we give you praise uh, for helping us again today we are praying for ourselves that lord will you help us help us to remain in your in your will help us lord are we in your will father please oh lord oh lord please uh Oh God, chain us together, chain us down into your will, tie us to your will, tie us down into your will, into your purpose, Lord God Almighty. Don't allow us to leave your will. Oh Lord, don't allow situations, uh, circumstances, challenges to push us out of your counsel, to push us out of your will. Oh God, may we remain in your will, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, give us the grace to be patient with you. O oh Lord God Almighty, until you answer prayer, until O oh God you bring to pass, O oh God, your promises for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless us, O oh God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, anybody saying, O oh God, what is your will and your purpose for me? Lord, will you open the heart of such people? Will you reveal the Lord Jesus Christ to your people, to your children, to each and every one of us? And let your name be glorified. We thank you. We bless your holy name today. Glory be to your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So we see you again the next time as I commit you into the hand of the Almighty. God bless you.